anyone who has any issues, um, and then we'll uh, forward to Tara's presentation. So Tara um, has been a public health nurse since graduating nursing school in 2002, and she currently works in the Healthy Growth and Development Program at the Gray Bruce Health Unit. She has been a lactation consult for, consultant for 10 years, and she has created and ran a breastfeeding clinic at Public Health, and currently she supports individuals involved in the Healthy Babies, Healthy Children program with breastfeeding challenges. Her work with this program involves increasing the knowledge and capacity of public health nurses to use evidence-based practices to so support both the client and the community. She is the founder and current chair of the Gray Bruce Breastfeeding Coalition, and she is passionate about sharing her knowledge of breastfeeding within her organization and within the community. So if uh, Tara does speak about BPSO, just wanted to let you know what it stands for. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, it stands for Best Practice Spotlight, Organiz Spotlight Organization. And uh, BPSOs are healthcare as well as academic organizations who were selected through a, a process of uh, proposals to implement as well as evaluate the RNEO best practice guidelines. So it is a dynamic, supportive partnership, and it provides um, that um, you know coaching and the education and, and the needs so that organizations can successfully implement um, multiple guidelines, RNEO guidelines over a three-year period. So, provided that, I'm going to pass the ball to Tara to begin her presentation. Great, thank you. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you today about how we implemented our, the RNAO BPG, promoting and supporting the initiation, exclusivity, and continuation of breastfeeding for newborns, infants, and young children here at the Grey Bruce Health Unit. Um, just trying to see if my slides will come up at all. So Terry, you have control now. So if you just want to use the arrows at the bottom left hand of the screen, you don't need to exit. You can just press the arrows. Okay. You can just press, yeah, there you go. And then the faint arrow at the bottom. There you go. There. It's hard to see. I put a white background. I should have done that differently next time. <laughs> there we go. I'm just going to go back one. I apologize. Sorry, guys. I feel like I just headed the wrong direction there. Andrea, would you mind taking over the slides? Because I'm just looking at them on a white screen. Oh, You're there not we seeing go. anything there? There, now I'm just gonna use the arrow keys, I think, rather than uh, click to see if that works. No, I'm not able to see where the arrow is. Sorry about that. Go ahead and I'll move your slides. That's great. You can go to the next slide. Thank you. That's great. So today, these are the objectives. I was hoping to talk to you about how um, at the Graber's Health Unit, we implemented the best practices outlined in the BPG. Um, I wanted to talk to you as well about how we regularly and consistently provide opportunities for staff education using adult education principles, how we promoted our community-wide evidence-based practice through sharing of knowledge, practices and tools, and providing education opportunities, and then how we made a plan for sustaining that change that we've made um, by implementing the BPG. Um, I'd like to start by giving just a short overview of our health unit. So we are, um, we have just under 162,000 people that live in the two counties we service, Gray and Bruce. Um, within our boundaries, we also have two First Nation reserves that are located in Bruce County, the Chippewas of Maywash Unceded First Nations and the Chippewas of Saugeen First Nation. Um, Gray Bruce Health Unit is characterized by about 46% urban and 54% of rural population. Um, so, you know, in, on, in Ontario, the averages are about 85% urban and 15% rural. Um, in 2016, there were 8,310 children aged between zero 
to four years old in our two counties. And we have approximately 1,575 live births a year. Our breastfeeding initiation rates are very similar to the provincial average where we have about nine out of 10 mothers initiate breastfeeding and about two fifths exclusively breastfeed for at least six months. Um, can you move to the next slide for me, Andrea? So this webinar will focus on the ongoing implementation and sustainability of the BPG. And um, it's, so I've put a copy of the BPG up. Um, I was able to complete a advanced clinical practice fellowship with the RNAO to support the implementation of the BPG at the health unit. So that was a wonderful opportunity for me to have to focus self-directed learning experience to implement that best practice guideline with support from my mentors at the health unit and the um, program teams that I work on. So the Healthy Growth and Development Program Team and the Healthy Babies Program Team. Um, through focusing on this BPG interventions, we were able to increase staff knowledge and capacity. We enhance that shared culture of learning that we have at, at our health unit. Um, and we focused on the community's needs uh, and collaborated with the community to continue to enhance learning um, and create ongoing possibilities for sustainability and continued growth in Grey Bruce. So in public health, we don't only provide just one-on-one -on -one client care, but we also work in a system where the entire community is the client. And that was an interesting way to pick up the BPG and view it and figure out how we wanted to start with implementation. So in the 12 weeks I had dedicated to the BPG implementation through that Advanced Clinical Practice Fellowship, um, I was able to look at both my own learning needs as well as our organization's gaps or any gaps in breastfeeding planning um, and staff knowledge um, as the requirement for public health units to achieve BFI status was removed from the public health program standards our organization decided to discontinue our efforts to receive designation. Um, and then at the almost very same time, this BPG came out. So this gave us an amazing opportunity uh, to implement the BPG and to um, kind of invigorate and refocus our breastfeeding program. And it provided an opportunity for an evaluation on where we stood in terms of our evidence-based practice and knowledge and where we would like to improve. So it was a wonderful time for me to come on and take this on um, at the organization. As a lactation consultant of 10 years and a longtime public health nurse, I was really thrilled at the opportunity to increase my own personal skills and knowledge and expertise and to share with my coworkers and community partners to help improve our client outcomes. Um, my primary mentor was a longtime uh, champion of increasing nursing knowledge, a program manager and our chief nursing officer at the health unit, Sarah Ellis. And Sarah has extensive knowledge on, in adult education and her support in this process was incredible. Um, my program manager, Susan, Susan Schuler, who is now a director at our organization, was also an incredible manager and uh, mentor and support for this. Uh, one of our fellow public health nurses, Lisa Alguire, who has herself completed an ACPF, um, worked with me to support me in understanding all the tools and supports available through RNAO and through the ACPF pro process. And I'd just like to take a second to thank them very much for their help. They really are inspiring and uh, they were so helpful and supportive. Um, the Healthy Growth and Development Program team and the Healthy Babies team, um, who work across a huge geographic area in Grey Bruce, we're very interested in helping with rolling out the BPG. They carry a heavy weight every day in their work day that comes with working from, with families who struggle with hardships. And they were there ready with smiles on um, to support the implementation and provide honest feedback. And most impressively, they're not just there to learn for themselves and to support their own practice. But since um, implementing the BPG and working on the ACPF, the nurses on our team have gone on and the parent support workers to share information and help support change in other organizations across Grey Bruce. So it really was an um, all-encompassing process and uh, a very uh, wonderful experience for me here at the health unit. 
Um, our health unit is a BPSO, a, a best practice spotlight organization. And as a smaller health unit, we often get um, some pretty amazing opportunities to grow as a, as a nurse. Um, so it really is quite a wonderful place to work. We have an incredible leadership that prides itself on, on implementing best practice and is open and embracing, um, open to embracing change and quality improvement. And so implementing the BPG um, through the Advanced Clinical Practice Fellowship Program really was an easy process uh, for me. And I wasn't expecting that. Um, I kind of thought I might come up against uh, a couple barriers, but that everyone just seemed to be on board. Um, so I'd like to thank everyone for that and thank those um, awesome staff members who are downstairs listening to me today and supporting me. Um, so as I was looking at the um, rolling out the BPG, I was looking at working within the Healthy Babies, Healthy Children program. Um, we thought we would start with where we sat as an internal um, structure, our internal organization to figure out what we would like to look at. Um, so with the help of the Healthy Babies program team and the mentorship team, I was able to complete a nursing team needs assessment. Uh, we did a focus group with the program. Uh, we provide one-on-one -on -one breastfeeding support to the nurses so they can help their clients. Uh, we created ongoing updates and open communication opportunities. And we made sure we implemented the BPG in strategic areas to best support our internal practice. So if you haven't looked at look, doing an ACPF um, process yourself it's for your own professional growth, I highly recommend it. It was a very satisfying experience. Hi, Tara. Can you just remind me to move the slides when you'd like yeah. them? Yeah, I was just talking a lot on that one. <laughs> Thanks, Andrea. So we're here right on the slide that I wanted you to be on, so thank you. I'm gonna take a second and outline the tenants of the um, BPG that we're talking about today. So they're here on the screen for you. The BPG is a document that's gonna outline our um, practice and provides resources for evidence-based nursing practice. So uh, in the RNAO breastfeeding BPG, the focus is on promotion and supporting breastfeed initiation exclusivity and continuation for newborns and infants. It provides the overview of appropriate structures and supports. Um, and the guidelines created based on guiding principles of person and family-centered care and recognizing that breastfeeding is the optimal feeding practice and the norm for newborn infants, young children, um, and when, supplied, when they're supplied with complementary foods after six months. Okay, next slide, Andrea, thanks. So the other guiding principles of the BPG are that nearly all healthy term infants can be breastfed. And this outlines the targets of breastfeeding. Our, we are looking to ensure initiation of breastfeeding within the first hour of birth or once that dyad is clinically stable, exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months of life, continued breastfeeding for two years or longer, exclusive breastfeeding to six months, at which time the infant will receive no other liquids or solids except for vitamin drops, syrups, mineral supplements, or prescribed medicines. And this is the most favorable infant feeding practice to promote healthy outcomes for newborn infants. And next slide. So the guiding principles of the BPG are that the practice of breastfeeding extends beyond the physiology to include other components like social, political, economic, cultural, psychosocial, and organizational factors. This fits in um, perfectly with how we do our work at Public Health. Breastfeeding supports the uh, parent relationship with the newborn, the infant, and the young child, including bonding and attachment, and that breastfeeding persons have a right to full information on the newborn infant and young child feeding choices, including benefits and harms to support their informed decision making. And next slide, please. We also are focused on the fact that skin-to-skin -skin contact is a key strategy to facilitate breastfeeding. Nurses and our interprofessional team, so on our Healthy Babies, Healthy Children team, that's the public health nurse and the family health, um, or it's the late home visitor, the parent support worker, um, and they play an integral role in supporting initiation and exclusivity and continuation of breastfeeding. And the sixth tenant, uh, the guiding principle of the BPG is that breastfeeding promotion is achieved through consistent implementation of evidence-based practice. 
Next slide, please. So setting this up for you, I wanted to make sure that we understood that we were talking about that what the goals and the, um, BP, the BPG outline. So this slide is about my um, a ACPF, my um, Advanced Clinical Practice Fellowship learning goals. So I was able to set goals for myself and what I would like to learn as I moved through implementing the BPG. So what I wanted to share to you share with you today is how we're looking at the BPG and how I was moving that into practice at our health unit. So my ACPF took place from September 2018 to February 2019 and my learning goal had four parts. First it was to develop our leadership skills and knowledge. Um, then it was to enhance my knowledge of current best, best practice breastfeeding interventions and then to demonstrate a transfer of that knowledge the internal staff through education and implementation of nursing best practice, um, breastfeeding policies and tools. So in our rural community, the Healthy Babies, Healthy Children, Public Health Nurses are the first line of support. They really are there um, to support everyone in our community. Uh, and they are the, the first people that are contacted post-discharge um, from the hospital. The development of consistent Evidence-based practices for our PHNs is absolutely paramount for our breastfeeding success and continuation of our families. Um, another outcome of the ACPF that I was looking to find would be that we would increase consistency in our client care and our nursing practice to support our breastfeeding pa parents. Um, and finally, I also wanted to share the learning that I did during the ACPF with our Grey Bruce Breastfeeding Coalition. I wanted to to have a long-term goal of developing a community of breastfeeding best practice in Grey Bruce. And we have a structure for that already existing in our coalition. So um, I think that it was very important for me to bring what we were learning forward. So the ACPF process allowed me to tease out my learning goals by dividing the goals into specific areas, knowledge, skills, and experience. So the next slide, please, Andrea. The goals I had for knowledge were effective sustainability strategies and development of a sustainability plan to support evidence-based best practice. I was looking at the principles of adult learning to facilitate knowledge transfer. So I was looking at how we can increase the skill level and confidence of our PHNs and, and activities that would enhance that. So learning by doing, things that were relevant and useful to their practice and their work in, in the interest of their professional development. So they could add it to their annual professional development plan. Um, I wanted to make sure that our nurses were given the opportunity to practice and provided the opportunity to reflect and share. So by addressing some of those personal breast, and I also wanted to address my own breastfeeding um, gaps in knowledge. So I had recently moved back into this uh, area of practice from another area in public health. And um, it came at a perfect time for me to really understand what was happening in breastfeeding and how um, best practice had evolved in my uh, four years being away from, from working in the breastfeeding. Um, and also my other goal was to obtain a working knowledge of what they were currently doing in the Healthy Babies, Healthy Children program. Uh, next slide. So the next uh, focus on the, um, my skill goals that I had set up for myself. So I was looking at the ability to synthesize material, enhance my ability to identify those BPG recommendations and to complete a needs assessment with our team. I wanted to develop um, leadership team or leadership skills by forming a cross sector partnership for breastfeeding best practice through our Grey Bruce Breastfeeding Coalition and understand the processes and steps involved in integrating excuse me, the integrating that best practice into the HBHC program and the operational plan to improve client care and outcomes. Um, next slide, please. So the next set of goals that was outlined in my ACPF was expertise. The goals I identified for expertise were to act as a leader and a resource for our staff and our cross-sector partners to implement and sustain breastfeeding best practice. I was looking to solidify uh, my, my own knowledge of communication and my um, knowledge of adult education competence. So I really wanted to know that I was able to transfer knowledge 
and to help um, motivate staff. Um, I was looking at development, my development of a firm understanding of those best practices. And with my goals and knowledge, skills and experience that I've laid out for you to see, um, I'd like to just turn now to look at BPG a little bit. Um, I could talk for a long time, unfortunately, <laughs> for a timeline about every single aspect of those learning goals and uh, what we did. And I had a really hard time kind of distilling things down for you today um, into some key points that'll fit into a presentation over the lunch hour. Um, so we'll just go to the next slide, Andrea. So I wanted to take a quick look at the practice recommendations, education recommendations and organization and system policy recommendations outlined in the BPG. So it has these three types of recommendations. Um, I thought it would be useful to discuss implementation by moving through the BPG as it's laid out. Because sometimes I come to a webinar and I've read the BPG, but I kind of forget what the main points are. So I thought we'd kind of go through um, what we did based on um, how the BPG is laid out. I can't touch on all we achieved, and in some areas we were already meeting a lot of our recommendations, but I, I can share a little bit about how we implemented some of the most applicable things. Um, these recommendations are directed primarily towards nurses and the interprofessional team that works in clinical care to provide breastfeeding support to families. So um, all of the recommendations are applicable to the scope of practice for RNs, RPNs, and um, nurse practitioners. Um, the BPG was a perfect fit for the Healthy Babies, Healthy Children program, and we were able to focus on the entire Healthy Babies team, the public health nurses, and our parent support workers. So after looking through that main themes of the BPG with the Healthy, with our, my program manager and my mentor, um, we identified kind of some broad objectives that we were gonna work on, that we wanted to explore implementing those um, so to allow for effective use of time during the, the scope of the fellowship, I did a needs assessment survey and then facilitated a focus group discussion with our Healthy Babies team that would kind of serve to identify just a few key areas of need that we wanted to focus on during the fellowship. The results would then inform and support the development of our breastfeeding plans moving forward into 2019 and 2020. Um, the needs assessment survey was sent out to the, our Healthy Babies team members to answer using SurveyMonkey. And the questions asked each PHN and PSW about their experience and their needs in supporting breastfeeding prenatally to two years and beyond. So during the creation of the survey, it was determined that many of the organization and system policy recommendations, that third bullet on the slide that you see there, um, those were better kind of addressed in a conversation style. So um, instead of adding that into a needs assessment, we, I created some focus group questions and we had a format where we were able to talk about our um, organization system policy recommendations. So undergoing the process allowed me to examine our current practices and compare them with the BPG recommendations. Our nurses were able to identify areas of strength to them and uh, areas where we had felt we had met our best practice goals and they were able to identify specific areas for practice improvement. So we looked at those gaps between our current practice and our best and best practice, and we looked at where we wanted to go. So I'm going to touch on how we implemented some of the assessment um, and intervention practice recommendations. So next slide, please. So the RNAO BPG is kind of divided into um, assessment, and then we're looking at uh, intervention. Then we're going to look at get my page here. Uh, organization and system policy recommendations. So for the assessment, we really looked at um, our needs assessment survey and what it demonstrated. Um, when we're looking specifically at uh, the key stages in pregnancy and the key stages of lactogenesis, so that's when your breast milk comes in, um, we're looking at um, kind of what we did. So our our team did not have any specific prenatal breastfeeding tools that we used. Most indicated that they used their knowledge and experience to determine what to cover when they were discussing breastfeeding prenatally, and they used the health unit's online prenatal course as a basis for that. Um, they also used all of our breast, Best Start prenatal resources. So we had an online prenatal program that we were just beginning to work on, 
And so I took the time in the, in the ACPF to look at that online prenatal program and make sure that what was in that was applicable to the BPG. So we were able to make sure that it was representative. We added curriculum content specific to our areas of breastfeeding, community resources, substance use and breastfeeding, and our priority populations content. So our survey also showed that the PHNs would be really interested in learning about a tool to assess breastfeeding self-efficacy prenatally. So we looked at that a little further and we're going to look, um, you know, coming up at implementing a breastfeeding self-efficacy scale into practice. Um, as we kind of move our strategy um, forward. So as we kind of divided it into the stages of lactogenesis, we really found that we were meeting a lot of the goals outlined already in the assessment phase of that BPG. So I get you to flip to the next slide for me, Andrea. Thanks. So the um, next section of the BPG was looking at our interventions. So what are the effective interventions? Are we facilitating skin-to-skin -skin contact? Are we supporting the early initiation of breastfeeding through multi-component um, interventions? And next slide, please. Were we supporting effective positioning latch and milk transfer, supporting responsive cue-based feeding, teaching hand expression, implementing those individualized breastfeeding self-efficacy interventions? And next slide. And were we looking at um, individualized assistance to support or enhance production, ongoing proactive breastfeeding support services, and facilitating informed decision making around pacifier use? So we looked at these areas of intervention that went span from birth all the way through to two years. And when we did our needs assessment, we looked at what our nurses were comfortable doing, and they were absolutely um, very comfortable and confident in their ability to assess their what if there was a concern in most of these areas, as well as um, uh, there was a little bit of challenge in, their, in some of the ability to address the concern, create a plan of care and offer solutions. Um, in some of the areas that are challenging in breastfeeding practice, um, where we're talking about um, ability to address concerns around uh, nipple pain, um, and then breast uh, milk supply, um, through uh, situations like separation from an infant, um, cesarean birth, obesity, and breast surgery. So those were some of the areas that our team felt they, they needed a little bit of extra uh, support in. Um, also, uh, helping a, a parent or mom with flat nipples or inverted nipples to uh, breastfeed. So we took that, the learning about these, and we were able to kind of move um, these topics where we found we were actually meeting a lot of goals, we were able to move where we found we needed some work into areas um, that we can continue to explore as we have our regular meetings to address those specific areas where our nurses felt they needed a little extra um, information. So next slide, please. The next piece was providing breastfeeding education across a variety of settings through diverse approaches with tailored to the needs of the population and that included family members. So we looked at what our priority populations would be in Grey Bruce and identified and worked with those communities. So we talked uh, uh, to and uh, about our breastfeeding support for First Nations, for our Amish, Mennonite and Anabaptist communities, for our, our obese clients. We have uh, here in Grey Bruce has one of the highest obesity rates um, compared to Ontario averages. And we know obesity can affect uh, breastfeeding rates um, and breastfeeding success. And then we supported um, some of the creation of those tools and brought to um, the kind of Anabaptist Mennonite uh, working groups to our First Nations uh, community health nurse. And um, we scheduled meetings with those communities and made them aware of the BPG. And we're trying to determine what uh, resources they were using and were able to provide some resources to them that they hadn't um, hadn't known of before. One of the things that happened during the ACPF as well that I wanted to touch on about providing breastfeeding education across a variety of settings, um, specifically tailored to the needs of vulnerable populations, was during the time of my ACPF, um, legal, it was the same time as cannabis was legalized in Canada and it was rolled out into our communities. So I did receive a request 
um, that we have, uh, that I do a presentation along with like a um, local mental health and addiction social worker on the impacts of cannabis use prenatally and during breastfeeding to our um, Grey Bruce Child and Family Services, our child protection services. So it seemed like a really great fit with the BPG and it provided an opportunity for me to discuss breastfeeding and substance use to an integral key partner that I might not have been able to have that audience with. Um, well, in, when we're working a small organization, one event um, that went well quickly makes you the go-to person. And so an unplanned side effect of that presentation success was that I was um, quickly became a go-to person for all things cannabis and breastfeeding in all of Grey Bruce. So I was able then to roll out some education sessions to the Grey Bruce leadership team, which is a table consisting of education, municipal, nonprofit, and healthcare leaders. I was able to present to community health teams, family health teams, hospital obstetric units, um, nursing staff, uh, the early on centers, and internally at the health unit on cannabis and breastfeeding. And I was able to create resources for our website, social media, and a curriculum for use, um, as well as a resource index for healthcare providers to be used at our early on settings where our early on staff in the two counties are presenting to new parents. So um, it wasn't in our Maya plan originally as we were planning out the ACP app, but it was something that came up. Um, and I'm very happy it did because it was uh, a big piece that needed to be addressed at the time. And it was nice to have that um, uh, ability to do that. So I'm gonna skip to the next slide as well. Thanks. So we looked at our education recommendations and it was very difficult because we have a wonderful um, a group of nurses and an interprofessional team that's been, a, you know, they're very knowledgeable. Um, we looked at, at how we could support our nurses and our Healthy Babies team, our parent support workers. One of the things that we didn't see coming was that education uh, need around cannabis. And our nurses were able to take that education and, and then roll it out and bring it across um, to their community partners. Um, we, I was also able to go to the, uh, and get certification on the 20 hour BFI course. So I was able to roll that course out um, and provide teaching to the um, area hospital nurses as well, which was a wonderful opportunity to meet some education requirements. And I'm gonna skip the next slide. Thanks. And then I'm looking at our organization and system policy recommendations. As I started to look into our organization with the BPG in front of me, it was very clear that we actually were doing incredibly well. We had set ourselves up well under um, all the BFI work that we had done. So reviewing what we were doing as, as an organization was actually incredibly easy. We had met most of those goals um, that were outlined in the BPG. And then next slide, please. One of the things that we were able to do as I came back onto the team was I was able to provide some lactation consultant support to our um, Healthy Babies, Healthy Children program team. So we set up where um, we could have some one-on-one -on -one education opportunities to nurses, um, our PHNs and our parent support workers to support that learning um, and to support our Healthy Babies clients as um, they needed breast specialized breastfeeding support. So we were able to do uh, home visits with a parent support worker, I was able to go out, and then we would bring that um, home visit back to the whole team as a case study. We were improving um, the nurse's abilities to uh, respond to a breastfeeding situation and then sharing that with the whole team. And I'm gonna skip the next slide as well. Thanks. So this is the outcomes that we found in the ACPF. So the short-term outcomes and the long-term outcomes, we divided them by patient and community. And then um, next slide. And colleagues, the outcomes of the ACPF on colleagues. So increased education opportunities. And then the organization. Great. So, these are our next steps. Implementing the BPG will continue. Um, most importantly, it supported our internal le uh, learning needs and we've continued to identify, review and strengthen our best practices in our organization throughout the community. And then the last slide. 
Thank you. So we've learned that I, I learned I needed to expect support. I went into the ACPF implementation and I'm doing the BPG implementation with a concern that I wouldn't have a lot of support. Instead, I found that there just wasn't enough of my time to fulfill all the amazing ideas, the energy and the desire to move things forward that came from my team as well as our leadership. Our organization is incredibly comfortable as an um, organization uh, implementing our BPGs, so that made our buy-in really um, already built in. And it was a wonderful opportunity for me to, um, to go through this process. So the ACPF was left me with a clear plan for ongoing implementation um, and extreme personal satisfaction at having achieved a professional goal. It's helped me grow as a nurse, and I really can't say enough um, about how wonderful the team that I work with is and the management that I have. Um, and I'd like to thank them very much for that opportunity. Um, and if there's any questions now, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Tara. That was an excellent presentation. And it's, uh, it's quite obvious that you have a strong command of the knowledge to action process in terms of BPG implementation. And also that, um, you know, you've really um, you know, utilize, you know, the, your learning of adult learning principles and how to translate that evidence into practice and, you know, working as a team and leading a team and being able to make changes at various levels of care. So um, congratulations. It's, it's, a, it's a big project and I'm, I'm really happy um, to hear that it was a very fulfilling one with you and I'm sure that, um, you know, this work continues on. Yeah, absolutely. It's an ongoing thing for sure. Yeah. Exactly. Does anyone have any questions? Um, please feel free to type it in the chat box. Um, I realized that um, there were a number of outcomes that you had outlined. Oh, Advanced Cl Clinical Practice Fellowship is what ACPF stands for. So, um, at the beginning of all this stuff, it's kind of just shortened it. Yes, it's a very long name of the BPG as well as a very long thing to say ACPF. <laughs> yes, so um, Tara, did you want to briefly explain what ACPF is? So I thought that ACPF is the um, Advanced Clinical Practice Fellowship that I was involved with. So you apply to the RNAO um, to uh, there's different streams that you can you can look at, but it's essentially it's the it's time for um, a nurse to take a look at their own professional um, learning goals and figure out, um, kind of come up with a plan to enhance their own skills, which is quite an incredible opportunity. Um, I, I've done amazing things in my career, but um, no one really ever told me I could turn for 10 weeks and look at, at what I want to learn and how I can enhance my own learning. Like, it's really incredible. Um, so it was a great opportunity to do that. It's a, a formal process with that. Um, learning goals and uh, outcome plans and a sustainability plan that you um, put forward at the end. But if you have um, just, it, it was just an absolutely incredible opportunity that really helped me kind of solidify my breastfeeding knowledge. Like I said, this came at a perfect time for me coming back into that program area um, and then learning how to roll out a BPG um, in a measured way. Cause I'm someone who will take uh, an entire mountain when all I needed to take was a pebble. Um, I know that about myself. Um, and so I really learned a lot about how to kind of roll things out in a, in a measurable way that, um, that made sense to where our priorities needed to be as an organization. Mm -hmm. And it definitely shows in, the, in your presentation, your systematic approach and your identification of priorities. Um, so, um, and yes, as you were saying, the ACPF uh, focus on uh, professional, your own professional development, and Tara has been able to also leverage that to be able to move forward with the, uh, you know, implementing breastfeeding best practices in our organization as well. So, um, it had uh, a dual, um, in dual, um, I guess, um, fulfillment. Yeah. So there is one question here. What do you think is the biggest challenge for nursing moms in rural areas as opposed to urban centers? Oh, access to care. <laughs> really, um, it is a challenge for our rural families um, to access uh, care for a couple of reasons. So transportation, our geographic area here in Grey Bruce 
is humongous. People always say it's about the size of PEI, and this is just our little health unit. Um, so moving people from where they may reside to um, where help may be is a lot of help um, that's hospital-based that you could go to. Um, so having our Healthy Babies nurses uh, that are able to kind of move out into the community to help people who maybe do not have transportation um, is, is a huge uh, bonus. The other thing that is a challenge rurally is isolation, so social isolation. You can't get out to, um, to appointments, uh, so it's even more of a challenge to get out uh, for social reasons or to meet people. So having um, it kind of, that's, that's a large challenge as well. So we also have, you know, families who, who don't have transportation and are in the middle of nowhere um, and really don't have people that are coming to see them. Uh, we also rurally uh, lack a lot of um, uh, specialists. So there are, we're a large geographic area, but if I'm thinking, I think there's maybe five lactation consultants, maybe six, um, that practice in the entire area. Um, and a lot of them don't come to uh, families. So that can be a challenge as well for breastfeeding rurally. Um, I think those are kind of the, the three biggest. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, well, thank you very much for, for highlighting those differences. And I mean, uh, congratulations to your organization um, in terms of being able to navigate that and provide best practices. Um, uh, with the resources and in the context that you are working in and for the benefit of the mums and the babes. So thank you. Is there any other, um, any other questions before we wrap up? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Tara. And um, I really appreciate you uh, sharing your time and your expertise. Oh, there is one comment. I'm in the breastfeeding. Uh, I'm the breastfeeding lead at our health unit and leading our local breastfeeding coalition. We also have a smaller population in a large geographical area. I have constant trouble keeping our coalition going and active with low attendance. But I would love to pick your brain without uh, pick your brain about your coalition. So, um, Tara, I, I saw that your last slide, and we'll be sharing these slides um, to all the registrants today. That you have you had shared contact information. Would that be okay for? Um, Absolutely, yeah, I'd love yeah. to talk. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, we, uh, as well, our coalition um, contains everyone um, who really works with breastfeeding in Gray and Bruce. And so it actually, alarmingly, is a smaller table, but it can be quite um, uh, a challenge to find someone who has the time in their allotted to their work assignment to um, help chair the, co the coalition, help move things along. Also, as we have some organizations working on BFI, um, our some of our hospitals are all at different stages. So we've come together to help each other and to share information um, and sometimes, uh, you know, work together to get, to get um, things done. But not everyone having, not everyone at the same phase of things too can be a bit of a challenge. So, um, you do see some people who, who can't come, who, who are unable to make the, the, long, the long drive to the meeting, yet still see their clients. Um, so we do have um, opportunities to call in. Uh, we've done OTN in the past. So we have people sitting in one, one half of the uh, geographic area and people in our other half, and we're doing meetings like that now. And so that's allowed a couple more people who might not have been able to make it to get to us. That's been helpful, but I'd love to chat. Absolutely. I think that would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. And I'm just going to read out a couple comments and there is uh, one question and then we'll close uh, for today. Uh, Chani was saying this is anecdotal in nature, but I also think that other another barrier for breastfeeding mothers in rural areas would also be perceptions of breastfeeding held in smaller communities. I've seen this translated to some mothers finding it challenging to attend post-secondary education and breastfeed. And then she says, in more urban centers, breastfeeding on campus seems widely accepted, while in, in some smaller post-secondary education centers, I've seen mothers uh, find it challenging to find the same supports as they would in larger centers. 
Okay, well, thank you very much, Tani, for sharing. And Danielle says, and perhaps, um, again, you can connect with her work of, of, in, in terms of where we, they can find more information related to the courses that you mentioned. Absolutely, yeah, can you send me an email for sure? I'd love to talk to you. It was quite a few courses I was able to take um, that were, were very helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, excellent. Well, it seems like you're very, it seems like you're very thorough, very detail oriented, very systematic. Um, so, uh, wow, I'm just, I'm impressed by the work that you've done. And I'm sure that three months was, and what you said was, uh, uh, you know, just touching the surface of a, a bigger project and an ongoing project for you. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So thank you very, very much, Tara, for your presentation, and thank you, everyone, for attending. And if you have any uh, questions or further topic areas with regard to the, uh, these information sharing webinars, this is Champions um, delivering information and sharing with other champions. Please share with us. Um, Andrea is a stubs at rnao.ca, and you'll be sent a link to an evaluation, which will include an opportunity to be able to list some other topics that you'd be interested in future webinars. So thank you very much, everyone, for attending, and thank you, Tara, and have a great day.